This is Public Broadcasting. I'm your host, Captain Rutledge. And you know, when I'm not busy with work, I enjoy cooking in my kitchen. And not just daily meals, but also to bake bread and cakes, tossing up salads, and even special dishes every now and then. I've always had a love for food, and when I cook, I want my recipes to turn out spectacular the first time. I suppose that's one of the reasons why I've always enjoyed the cooking programs on public television. One of my favorites, now celebrating 20 years on the air, is America's Test Kitchen. First airing in 2001, America's Test Kitchen demonstrates to viewers how to cook high quality and stunning recipes along with mealtime staples tirelessly tested behind the scenes until they taste great. In addition to recipes, there are also equipment reviews, ingredient taste tests, and even a few looks behind the science of food. Although America's Test Kitchen began airing in 2001, its beginnings go all the way back to 1980 with the founding of Cook's Illustrated Magazine by Christopher Kimball. Chris Kimball is a Vermont native and an alumnus of Columbia University. While working in various publishing firms, Kimball took cooking classes in Westport, Connecticut, but was frustrated that most of the teachers could not answer his questions regarding cooking techniques, such as why egg whites need to be whipped to stiff peaks for angel food cake. So, Kimball began working on his own publication, Cook's Magazine. With a team of writers and test cooks, and $100,000 in angel investments from friends and family, Cook's Magazine worked to answer home cooks' most pressing questions and produce recipes that both work in a home kitchen and taste great. As the 80s rolled on, Cook's Magazine suffered under the wrath of advertisers and publishing firms until its eventual cancellation in 1989. After dabbling in other publications, Kimball was able to rebrand his old magazine as Cook's Illustrated free from advertisers and other outside influences, and entirely supported by its dedicated subscriber base. In 2000, Cook's Illustrated moved to television with a brand new series produced by a la carte communications and distributed by American Public Television, America's Test Kitchen. The show was recorded in the Cook's Illustrated Test Kitchen in Brookline, Massachusetts, formerly an old yoga studio. Chris hosted and introduced the show and recipes were prepared by chefs Julia Collin, Bridget Lancaster, and Kay Rentschler. The chefs would explain the rationale behind the recipe, while Kimball provided commentary and recapped the recipe for viewers at home. In addition to recipes, Jack Bishop subjected Chris to a taste test of supermarket ingredients, showing which products are best for home cooks and which ones should be avoided. Adam Reed reviewed kitchen gadgets and equipment to demonstrate the best choice to make home cooking easier. And at the science desk, John Doc Willoughby explained the science of what goes on behind the scenes of each recipe. Here we have an amino acid, here we have a sugar, you heat them up, they get together, and what happens is <laughs> they have a lot of little babies. They have all kinds of different flavor compounds. <laughs> Naturally, the show underwent a few changes over the years. Kay Rentschler left the show in season three, but other test cooks would join the on-screen team, including Becky Hayes, Sandra Wu, Yvonne Ruperti, J. Kenji Alt, Erica Bruce, Brian Roof, and Dan Souza. Ahead of the fifth season, the test kitchen received a facelift, allowing for more space in the cramped 2,500 square foot facilities. The first eight seasons were produced by Alcar Communications, with Nat Katzman and Jeff Drummond serving as executive producers. From the ninth season onwards, all episodes were produced by America's Test Kitchen Productions. In seasons five, eight, and nine, the science desk portions were animated by freelancer Odd Todd, with a comedic twist thrown into the science. Most people don't even know where flour even comes from. Ooh, ooh, I know. Yes, Larry? Um, it comes from a flower. That's right, Larry, it comes from the flower flower. Really? No, it doesn't. In season 10, Lisa McManus joined Adam Reed as the kitchen gadget guru, and Dan Souza began working behind the science desk. After season eight, the America's Test Kitchen team began production of another related series based off the Cook's Illustrated Sister magazine, Cook's Country.
The format of Cook's Country is very similar to America's Test Kitchen, with recipes, taste tests, and equipment reviews, but where America's Test Kitchen featured a wide variety of recipes and a good bit of science, Cook's Country focused on regional American cuisine. America is, after all, a country of cooks. Cook's Country was filmed on location in a renovated farmhouse in Rupert, Vermont, just down the road from a hog farm. While America's Test Kitchen episodes premiered the first half of the year on PBS, Cook's Country episodes would air during the latter half of the year. Both shows are excellent in PBS cooking programs. Tuning in during the past two decades, I'll admit, a great deal of their kitchen tips have rubbed off on me somewhat. For example, I now know that brining is a great way to keep pork and poultry from drying out during cooking. The significant difference between cake flour and bread flour comes down to protein content. Pasta should be partially undercooked, then finished cooking in its salts. And also tired of soggy peach pies? Just use cornstarch and low sugar pectin in your mix. The list goes on. I even use some of their recommended equipment, and uh, what's more, this tome is a 20-year America's Test Kitchen cookbook. Virtually every recipe from the show is included inside this 1,100-page behemoth, and it is essentially my kitchen bible in more ways than one. As the years rolled on, America's Test Kitchen and Cook's Country began to grow on social media platforms and even started an America's Test Kitchen Kids version in 2018. However, there were some issues behind the scenes with the show's host, Christopher Kimball. You see, in 2015, a contract dispute led to Kimball leaving both shows after the America's Test Kitchen 16th season and Cook's Country 9th season had already been recorded. After leaving America's Test Kitchen, Kimball started a new multimedia food series with Christopher Kimball's Milk Street. In addition to a magazine and radio series, the Milk Street TV show premiered on PBS in 2017. Kimball was the host, and the show's recipes were intended to, and I quote, change the way you cook. The Milk Street studio and offices were located in the Flour and Grain Exchange building on Milk Street in the Custom House District of Boston, Massachusetts. The thing about Milk Street, though, is that it is damningly similar to America's Test Kitchen in both concept and execution. In 2016, Kimball was sued by Boston Common Press for ripping off America's Test Kitchen. The case was eventually settled in 2019 after Kimball agreed to sell back his ATK shares. It's ironic, really, when a creation sues one of its creators, but uh, we do live in a crazy world. Days. In spite of Kimball's departure, America's Test Kitchen continued to grow and thrive. Julia Collin Davison and Bridget Lancaster became the new co-hosts, and the other ATK test cooks were given their time in the TV spotlight, especially Dan Souza, who now practically runs the ATK social media pages. In 2017, the Test Kitchen crew packed up their pots and pans and moved out of the cramped Brookline facilities to a new, more spacious location in the Boston Design Center near the seaport. Additionally, a new set was built in the new facilities for filming episodes of Cook's Country. No more cooking in a drafty farmhouse with pig manure wafting through the air. However, with the 2020 coronavirus pandemic, ATK Season 21 was filmed outside of the Test Kitchen and in the homes of our beloved Test Cooks, aptly titled America's Test Kitchen at Home. All's well, right? Well, like I pointed out earlier, Cooks Illustrated does not rely on advertisers to pay its expenses. ATK and Cooks Country barely recoup their costs with the help of underwriters. So, the ATK and Cooks Country websites are entirely subscription-based. And the monthly subscriptions are not cheap. In the past, Cooks Country has come under fire for their subscription practices. Not the subscriptions themselves, but rather their billing practices, unrequested product soliciting, and even the difficulty of canceling a subscription. True, they do need a way to cover expenses, but these shady business practices make one wonder why they don't change their name to Crooks Illustrated. Still, that's not really a full deal breaker. For me, at least. 
You see, in the past, cookbooks and TV chefs have always given instructions without a whole lot of explanation as to why. America's Test Kitchen changed that, showing how a recipe works, why it works, and how to make it work. Probably why it found a home on public television where curious minds congregate for further learning and exploration. Episodes of America's Test Kitchen and Cook's Country can be found daily on Create TV, as well as streaming on PBS Passport. The episode archive is available on the America's Test Kitchen website, along with streaming on Amazon Prime. And now, it's time once again for the PBS Member Station Spotlight, where we look at one of the great PBS stations across the country and draw a new name out of the pretty straw hat. Now, let's see who we get. Take this one. Okay, we're moving on to Smoky Hills Public Television. Smoky Hills Public Television first hit the airways in 1982, serving the plethora of counties in western Kansas not already served by the Wichita or Denver markets. Starting with flagship station KOOD Hayes, followed by newer satellite stations across western Kansas from 1989 to 2007. Due to the hilly terrain of western Kansas, most viewers had to access the stations via cable or satellite. In 2009, Smoky Hills Public Television moved to all digital broadcasting and changed its name to Smoky Hills PBS in 2019. Programming for Smoky Hills PBS includes original programming such as Doctors on Call, local sports coverage, Kansas Legislature live stream, Relag, Traveling Kansas, Learning Across Kansas, and Kansas Candidates. Today, Smoky Hills PBS provides PBS programming for the whole of western Kansas and portions of southwest Nebraska, impacting over 1.2 million viewers each week. If you're in western Kansas, you can tune in to Smoky Hills PBS on these stations with PBS Kids on the Dot 2 channel and Create on the Dot 3 channel. Well, thank you to everyone for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, feel free to like, subscribe, and share. Ring the bell, follow on Twitter, leave a comment below, and don't forget to support your local PBS stations. So more programming related to America's Test Kitchen can find its way to your television screens. And that's all for now, so until next time, I'm Captain Rutledge. Good day. Perfect beef stew. French apple tart, otherwise known as galette. 